Let's go. Yo, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Chains Out Podcast. It's your boy, Brett Ernst, here with Carlos Rodriguez, Boom. Um, who's in a really good mood. I've been giving you shit, but I'm glad you're happy, man. I am happy. It's fucking dope. Life is dope. Yeah. You got engaged. Can we talk about that? Yeah, we can talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Carlos got engaged, so he's, you know, all happy now. Mm. Ten, ten years from now, though. <laughs> You're like uh, the before <laughs> picture and then the after? What you call it? Yeah, no, got engaged. Got a, uh, I popped the question and did it um, Did it uh, in a not conventional way. I did it the way that we like it. You know, it wasn't the whole big fucking yeah, in front do. of some fountain or fucking. Family comes out of nowhere. Yeah, no, it wasn't any of that. It was it was just how, how, how our personalities matched. And I like it and I dig it. And small thinking about uh, we don't even know when we're going to get married, but it's it's a. Uh, it's no rush. She likes the idea of just being saying fiance for right now, and the wedding will be super fucking small. Well, I I hope so. <laughs> From your lips to God's ears. Yeah. Uh, I will say you did the engagement right. Because mm. a lot of people make a spectacle of it, but yeah. everything throughout this process, there's going to be people there, right? The wedding is more for the guests. Uh, they drag you all over the place if it's a big wedding. Um but the engagement is just you and her. Yeah. And, and then that's the person. Even when you have a kid, there's people in the room. <laughs> you know, this is the only thing that's private, really. Yeah. And then the thing, too, is like, you know, um, I'm not really even announcing it to it because you were saying to say it earlier. It's funny because they didn't edit it out of the, of the podcast that we had. Oh, really? Yeah, it's still in. But like, but like the reason why, too, it's like. Especially with dudes, like dudes don't don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? That's that's for the women, that for them to announce. Yeah, it everything's say it. for them. Yeah, and I'm like, dudes are like, hey man, that's cool, right on. Or or I'm gonna get a joke or hear some shit, and I'm like, I don't want to fucking hear that right now. I want to enjoy this, so I'm gonna enjoy it for as much as possible and be personal. I like we were talking about it too, and I'm just like, I want to post it, but I don't want to post it. She was like, totally understand. She was like, don't don't, don't post. Don't post. Yeah, yeah. Don't and do the any other of that thing shit. is. All your friends are happy for you, but every one of them's praying you don't invite them. <laughs> yeah, I, and that's why I want to make it small. I, when, when I was getting married, I don't. I, I would send out the invites and just apologize to my friends and be like, "Look, uh, you know, I, you don't have to come if you don't want to. It's an inconvenience, and you know." And, but we, it, you know, keep it small, man. Just keep it with the family. Who is who is the one that you said you were like? And you better like, invite me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So at so, least at least you'll get some money. Yeah. No. Nah. It's funny because it's do like, Mexicans do that? Uh yeah, give you an envelope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um it's funny because like uh you had some I can't remember what was on it was it was way on back in the other podcast on the on the on the year on the list where you had a guest and he and he was and you were trying to give him a, an invite, but you didn't want to kind of tell me just like, hey man, what's your address? So you know, I'm gonna send you he was like, fuck you want my address for? You're like, that's the most Italian shit ever. You don't want to give me any information because I'm trying I'm trying to invite you to a fucking wedding, you piece of shit. I don't remember who. <laughs> I can't remember who that was, too. One, it's probably what you know, one of my scum my, one of my friends who remained nameless was in the wedding party and he never replied. He calls me the day of going, I don't think I'm going to make it. <laughs> and I knew that because, like, I had other friends there, too. And, uh, you know, I already had it planned out. But um, it was, it, you know, it's just that's what guys do. You man. had great bits, too, that come out, came out of that, too. The whole uh... Uh, principal's office, the, <coughs> the engagement photos is never fun. Yeah. Jarrell, did you are you guys? Oh, no, you're not engaged. You just live with your girl. Just, just yeah, don't, it. don't do it. Dude, the the joke about the um, <laughs> the 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 one that's eating the harp, the, the lady that has the harp. Yeah, she ate all of our food. <laughs> yeah, she took a a twenty minute break. <laughs> Had to pay for her break. Uh -huh. She eating all the shrimp. All the shrimp gone. I caught her fucking stealing shrimp. You said you, she was doing it like a like a seal. She was cracking. She's eating fucking on her chest like an otter. <laughs> like an otter. She was cracking shrimp on her chest. I caught her. I said, "What are you doing?" I caught her. <laughs> I caught this bitch in the behind the. <laughs> no, I'm like, what are you doing? Why don't you sit out, play your fucking harp, and then sit down like a person? Mm -hmm. You're already. You, the, we already included you in the meal. <laughs> You're fine. Shoveling You're, all the fucking <laughs> shrimp like a savage. She was shuckling uh, clams and shit. And then we we bought all these like because you're supposed to give like gifts to like little like you know little member memorabilia whatever the fuck it is and oh, they yeah. forgot to put those out so we were stuck with like two hundred fucking bottle corks. <laughs> Um, is a, uh, oh, it was, I'll, I'll tell you though, it, it was fun, man. I, I, you don't remember it. No. That's why the, the best wedding I ever went to was my cousin was, was at a small wedding in the middle of nowhere because he, he owned chicken farms at the time. 
which is nothing funnier than seeing uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it, the at the time what what the idea was um but he was feeding like chickens in like with scapadels on like the dress shoes and and the, and the shorts <laughs> Kicking them because they're vicious, man. <laughs> they attack you and shit. With their beaks. So we were in the middle of nowhere, and we were very limited. So everybody cooked, and we had a guy uh, DJ, and it was small, and it was the most fun way because nobody was forced out. The bar huh. was open till four. We got hammered. It It'd was be, it was a great time. Be man. very lax. What did I say that one time? Your your, your, your hard ass mom for a wedding gift got you a scale. Yeah, engraved. <laughs> she it got said, me a. Uh, <laughs> it said a uh, triple beam scale. Yeah, it said uh, engraved. It said it said teach a motherfucker how to fish. <laughs> <laughs> Go earn. Got me some baking soda, a little Arr. starter kit. <laughs> get this, your, this is for you guys to get on your feet. Yeah, it's not your family, right? <laughs> you know the the whole wedding thing. So Italians that that became a thing later on, but it, they used to call them f like um, they would just have sandwiches and throw the sandwiches at the at, at the guests. It would call football weddings almost, where they would just <laughs> throw sandwiches. Everybody would eat. <laughs> Um, you know, then it became this big production later on. Uh, but you know, it, it should be private. It's great. You married a good girl. She's a great kid. Well, you're getting married to mm -hmm. puts up with your shit. Like yeah. to play video games. Yeah. She's cool. So you're not being judged. She, uh, I, I've been writing this new joke about her. Uh, and I go, I love my girl because she has, uh, she has that one quality, um, anxiety. It's the best, like, cause she doesn't want to, she doesn't want to go out or do anything, cause she gets like scared. So every time I try to, she like wants to do something, I, I, I activate it, and like I'm like, yo, I was like, are you sure? There's a lot of people out there at that concert. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go see the concert. No, I go see okay, but you know, it's, Bruno Mars. Oh, right now it's packed. <laughs> yeah, Bruno Mars has a residency. I'm like, are you sure though? Cause he's, I, it's sold out for three, four shows. She it's didn't want to be a to lot of people there, hon. Yeah, she didn't want to go. Let's go. It'll be fun. <laughs> I want to go to the sphere, but she didn't want it because because she was flipping out too about the thing. You said like you already said you went though. No, I wanted to go. Oh, okay. I was out of town. I got uh, complimentary U two tickets and I couldn't make it. The other thing, uh, that's what I love about this town, man, mm. is that there's always something to do, dude. Like I like went to the the Knights game on Saturday. <coughs> oh yeah, and they played uh, Detroit. Great game. You did um, the horn. I did the siren when you bring it in. Yeah. Like you, you kick it off. <laughs> the Yeah. Oh, shit. It was fun, man. It was a good time. And then, um, you know, when you when you can drag yourself down there, mm -hmm. once you're parked, and you could just go do it. We went to go eat at the steakhouse at uh, Park MGM. Uh, it was just a good time, man. There's just so much to do now. That's that's why I love it. And there's no state tax. That's the biggest <laughs> thing. <laughs> that's the best. Um, yeah, no, uh, I've never been to a, a hockey game. I want to try, I want to check one out. Dude, they're great. Yeah. They wanna... really are, man. I mean, you know, hockey's different. So it's a point system mm -hmm. more. <laughs> so for every win, you get two points for every loss. The team gets a point, but if it goes into overtime, then whoever wins gets two. I'm sorry. Yeah. Whoever wins gets two. Winner gets two points, loser gets no points. If it's in overtime, then they get a point. Oh, okay. So, so they... you can still lose a game and get a point oh. if it goes to overtime. And then they add the points up, and then whoever has the most. They uh, go to playoffs. They or go to playoffs. Oh. Right now, the Knights, if it ended today, I think we get the second wild card. That Detroit win was a big one. Oh, shit. And they traveled. Detroit was in the house, boy. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, well, yeah, they all travel. Like Vegas. But Detroit they... was like. I think in the 90s, I mean, they, they won the Stanley Cup a lot. Uh, Jarrell, can you look up? Can you look that up? Jer uh, the, the Red Wings, right? Is that what they are? Yeah, 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 yeah. And when I was a kid, I used to go to the Devils games because my stepbrother's wife at the time, well, girlfriend, worked the front office. So we would go there to the Devils games. Mm -hmm. And then in the 90s when the Panthers went, you know, because I, I, I'm like a chick with, with hockey. I got like three teams. <laughs> but I've, I've went to enough. Go ahead. 11. They went to 11? Yeah, they, they went to won 11. 11. They How won many 11? in the 90s, though? I mean, you want to go all the way back to 1935? No, no, the or, 90s. 90s. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, the 90s. My bad. The, uh, one, two, two in the 90s. 96, okay. 97. What about early, early odds? Um, 2001, 2007. That carried over. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, um, yeah, because they, they were, I remember playing them on, uh, on Sega. On the NHL game on Sega, they, they oh, were the, yeah, I remember they that. were hard to beat. <laughs> the uh, New Jersey Devils, though, that they're named after like 
Is there, there's like a myth about yeah, it. the New Jersey Devil was like this. Thing what is that, that? It was like this thing that that apparently people saw in New Jersey. It was uh, like a chupacabra type of thing. Yeah, like a oh, chupacabra. Okay. He would fly around and shit. Dude, that's he'd be like it. he'd be flying going, hey, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? Oh, hey, boo. Oh, hey, <laughs> fuck over here. <laughs> ah. What are you doing? What are you, like, hey, what are you doing out in the dark out here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? Do you know what time it is? <laughs> it's flying around. Eating pizza. <laughs> is that you, Joey Diaz? <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey. hey you're you walking around. All you hear is, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> 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 what is it? The New Jersey Devil was... Yeah, so it's a folk legend. Uh, for over 250 years, there's been tales circulating about the nocturnal ramblings of a creature emerging from the mists of a lonely, desolate marsh. Uh, in the Meadowlands? <laughs> in the <laughs> yeah. And then it... Bl I guess it comes out from Giants Stadium. <laughs> hey! <laughs> fucking Giants blew it, huh? Again! <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, shit! The tale grew over time, and now it's tied to South Jersey history. Yeah, that's uh, that's yeah, that's that's the other thing. It's it was more uh, where Pete's from. Oh, really? Okay. But uh, we used to have a night in Body. Jersey. Uh, I don't know if did you guys did we talk about this the night before Halloween where you destroyed shit? Yeah, we're talking. We talked about it. Yeah. So there was Devil Night. Goose. I think they called it Goosey Night by me, and it might have been Devil's Night in the Midwest. I don't know if that had something to do with it. I, never mind. I Detroit. To make a I remember like that on the Crow. I just made that shit up. Oh, they're making another Crow actually. Mm-hmm. It's with a, it's with the guy from uh It. It, yeah. Yeah. Scars Dog. Whatever his name is. <laughs> Scarsdale? Scars -er. Oh, Scars -er -er ass. What, what's it say? Night before Halloween in New Jersey. Mischief night. Mischief night. It was it, it was a night where, you know, that's when you just go out and destroy shit. And a New Jersey dad will be like, yo, what the fuck are you <laughs> doing? <laughs> It's my cousin's place. <laughs> Fuck out of here. I'm here now. I'm, I'm telling here. you now. You talk, the, the devil talks like Feech Lamana. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me I'm fucking sorry. I'm sorry about I'm that. Sorry. Hey, Godfather. You know, sometimes, sometimes, I mean, no, he talks like Frank Pantangelis. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Why not? I'm, I'm Are you the, the Jersey Devil. I don't remember seeing that. <laughs> Are you the Jersey Devil? <laughs> Devil Schnevel. The, the, the FBI guys. I said, so yeah. Yeah, I'm the devil. <laughs> I said, yeah, sure. Why not? I never heard, I never heard of no Vito DeColeon being the devil. <laughs> You'll have no problems from me. Cheech, El Port. <laughs> Fucking. Um... The devil had a little too much wine. <laughs> Frank Pantangeles is strong. On uh, the what? Godfather two. That's two, right? Yeah, when he when uh, Mike shows up at the house, and he's like, "I didn't know you were coming." Honey. Oh yeah. And he goes in my home, where my wife sleeps. He goes, "Look, I don't understand." <laughs> when he tells him, "I don't have your mind for this street stuff," but I say we hit the Rosado Brothers while we got the muscle. <laughs> <laughs> well, my kids play with the toys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm paraphrasing that scene. Yeah, I like that one part. Well, uh, the, we were talking about we we did it earlier too. That at the house it was a little funny because we were talking about it. About funny enough, I have I won't have it sold. <laughs> I'm sorry, I won't have it sold near schools. <laughs> it's an inferma. Uh, what do you say? What's the point? Because she goes like, it was a boy. It was a uh, boy. it was a boy, Michael. Oh, yeah. With your Sicilian, and he fucking slaps her. I got to know. It's just ha ha. <laughs> he's, he's all amped up. <laughs> oh fuck, man! Ah, uh, it's just such a good movie because it's uh, considered in AFI's top. I told you, it's top ten films of all time. I think like four are about Italian Americans. It's supposed to be the um the like the best sequel ever made. I was telling because Eliana is getting into uh. The, the the gangster movies and whatnot. So she watched Goodfellas for the first time. And then she was like, this is really good. She was like, but I go, I go, but I can't watch the end though. Like once he goes, once the helicopter comes, yeah, yeah. these are the bad times. And I can't, I can't watch it. And I Pete go, does a great Henry Hill. Yeah, he does. Pete Giovanni. <laughs> he does the whole good ass inner monologue. I know. <laughs> and, uh, and I go, yeah, just that one. Like I just, I could watch up to that part. And I go, um, cause she watched, the the godfather and she liked it because she watched the the paramount one what was it what's the 
What's the Paramount? The offer? The offer, yeah. So she I got haven't to, seen that yet. She got to see the behind the scenes one, so it got her really interested in it. And I go, she hasn't seen part two yet. And I was like, part two is one of the best sequels ever made. And like, and I go, it's if you watch it, and I'm putting too much on it, but it's been such a long time, people have copied the idea of of the part of part two's Godfather. No one had ever seen it like like that, where they go, it's a prequel and a sequel all in the same movie. Well, the the thing is, is that the HBO put it in chronological order. Yeah, you seen that? Which was fucking. I never thought, and they put the deleted scenes in. It's like a uh, six or seven hours, right? Um, yeah. The only one fuck up in the whole movie is when uh, Sonny's beating up uh, Carlo. John, yeah, Carlo, mm -hmm. and uh, you see him miss. <laughs> yeah. And then Frankie Carboni is is standing there watching. You know Frankie Carboni from Goodfellas? Uh, the, uh... Hey, <laughs> step the bond, gaze at each when he walks in. <laughs> Ming <laughs> Garagi With the curly hair, <laughs> yeah. and then he plays uh, one of the guys in the in the flashback scene. But uh, they they cut the scene out. I don't know if you've ever seen the Godfather poster where you see Michael and they're by the car with his father, Sonny and Fredo. I don't think so. There's no. a picture of it, and it it was never in the movie. But in the cutout scenes, that's when they go visit. Um, what was? Uh, Don Corleone's conciliary's name. God, Brett, this is awful. What, Robert Duvall? No. The the one that when when Sonny's like, Pop oh. got a Sicilian for a conciliary, and this is what I get. Who was the guy it? that uh he was in the on the olive oil business with uh with his father. Yeah, Bruno Kirby. not Bruno Kirby. He, no, was, no, the, no. he was the buddy in, uh, in later what, on. What was his conciliary's name? Ooh. Okay. Uh, fuck. It'll come to me right when you find it. <laughs> uh, right now, I apologize to all my Italian American <laughs> listeners. Uh, this is disgusting. How do I not remember his name? It was uh, he was on the Godfather one, right? He's talked about. So when oh, when they go from the wedding, they leave the wedding to go see him in his in his deathbed uh, when he's in the hospital. And then that's where that picture came from when they all get out of the car. People are yelling at you too on the podcast. Oh, like, yeah, I, 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 this is, this is, uh, don't worry, I'll punish myself. <laughs> if Kevin Stewart is listening, yeah, he's like, on. what are you doing? I'm punishing myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is gross. I'm taking the chain off until mm -hmm. we figure this out. Mm -hmm. I apologize. This is my punishment. This is my penance. Everyone at Maruka's is fucking yelling right now. I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> go ahead. Keep talking. Yeah, no, the, uh, but no, I was telling you, yeah, I go, uh, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino are in the same movie, but they're not ever in any scenes because they play in different timelines. And uh, they're only together in heat. Uh, oh, and then the other one that's no one I want to talk about because uh, it's terrible. Which one? The original heat? Well, the original heat that they're great in, but the movie after that was like 50 well, cents. Well, that's not the original then, heat. No, that's not the original heat. No, yeah, I'm saying. I mean, there the, was that 80 or 90s <clears throat> heat. TV that, movie. That they did that that was based off of. No, I'm talking about the uh, like them them being that's a, that's when they get together for the first time. But then there's another movie too with 50 Cent and Robert De Niro and Al Pacino where they where they're back on screen together. But it's such a good Heat is so good. They're, they're making a sequel to that too. It's a prequel though. And um, Janko, that was his name. <clears throat> Janko. Janko, the name of the uh, oil company. Janko Abandondo. And I was telling her though, I was telling her about about how De Niro kills it. So he wins the Oscar for that role. And I was like, you don't know De Niro like you should know De Niro because she's she she was born in 2007. You know, so I'm like, you know, meet the Fockers De Niro. You know, that's all you know is Taxi Driver De Niro's great. Yeah, she doesn't know any of that. So I, I got her watching uh, Raging Bull next. And because uh, Raging Bull is. It, Did you ever see Mean Streets? Yeah, I see Mean Streets with a, when, know, he plays uh, a, when he plays a, a punk. Yeah, Richie Aprio's in that. Really? Yeah, he's the uh, bartender at the when they go to the after hours. Yeah, man. I hardly can tell. But it's. Uh, Dude, I'll tell you, man, I was talking about this the other day but we were the streets for 80 years uh italian americans italian like, americans even like and and you know we also influenced hip-hop especially in the fashion and the uh defamation uh, in the, and definitely in you the know. lyrics you know i mean you know um and i i believe the godfather of graffiti a uh, guy that used to go by scene i think he's italian from the bronx uh you can look that up, Jorel. <clears throat> look up scene, graffiti artist. But, um, you know, we were, in, especially on the East Coast, we were the streets from like 40s to <laughs> when the Sopranos ended. <laughs> 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 then, then our reign is over. 
then the government got a hard on for us in uh Oh, he's like really comic book. That's pretty cool. That's 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 the f considered the best and f grand godfather of graffiti. Yeah. Is seen, man. I remember he used you'd see his shit on the trains back in the day. Again, I'm going off a of fucking memory. So, <laughs> what's his name? I, I'm almost positive he's from the Bronx and he's Italian. Yeah, he's considered godfather of graffiti. <clears throat> Started at the age of 11. Uh, I don't think they have his government name. He, he, they, cause you know, when I was a kid, they would, all the trains got bombed, bro. Like, you know, when you see it in the eighties yeah. and then they developed this like metal where, um, it would, uh, they could, you couldn't spray paint on it. Uh, oh, okay. So Did you ever see just, Beach Street? That's, that's before my time. I think I might've seen it, but all I don't remember it. these movies are before your time. You can't <laughs> throw that out there. No, no, no. But I don't think I've seen Beach Street, like, like remember it. I think I've seen probably pieces of it when I was really, really little. So it was about. It was about the graf well. It was about the break dancing and because uh, you know the the obviously brothers get credited for hip hop, but the Puerto Ricans uh, were huge in it. I mean, they were a part of that culture, and then like I said, the Italians played a little uh, a small role. Um, but uh, back in the day, it was just New York City. You know what I mean? Like before yeah. it went out to the rest of the country, it was just that little area. Yeah, and. Uh, the graffiti there that 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 used to that's that's how i used to see it as a kid the um, letters but and shit. yeah so when people do you know how the you know remember keith herring the artist that's on the name sounds super familiar he did all the bubble stuff that mm. you saw um so he started in the subways too so what would happen is they would rip the posters down and again i'm going off of memory so <laughs> if anybody wants to correct me feel free i'm not i'm not upset with it <laughs> they would pull the, the the posters down and there would be like chalk there like a like a black backing mm -hmm. and he used to write uh with chalk he would make those little characters um can you put up keith herring you'll know his work when you see him there's uh, uh this new artist that i've been following uh he's uh I'm trying to i want to buy some of his art actually his name's paul uh kenton and it's fucking dope because he uh He's talking about New York, man. He does these portraits of New York with like painting, with paint, paint. And it's just, he does it with like splashing. It's fucking dope. The way, like, oh man, it's it's ridiculous. It's one of the like. That's, you see like the, the little guys? Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember these see guys. The little guy taking in the ass, bent over. <laughs> yeah, I remember these guys. Yeah, so, and then he did, he did like the cover for, uh, I think he did the USA Tried. for Africa cover. Yeah, these guys look hella familiar. Yeah, that that that's what he was known for. So he would do these little things in the subways, mm -hmm. and then um, what was the girls? There was one, I want to say, pink lady. Is there a pink lady graffiti artist? Oh God, I can't think of her name, man. She was like another famous. Yeah, I think lady that's pink? it. What was it? Lady Pink. Lady Pink, maybe that's mm. it. God, but she was like one of the famous ones too, man. Cool. There's documentaries on this shit. Is that her? That can't be. She looks too young. Anyways, now now we're silent. <laughs> yeah, New York. Yeah, she was in New York. Yeah. Um, find out if that was the eighties though. Started in 1979. With yeah, the, that's with her then. Yeah. Damn, she looks good. Um, but anyways, getting back to it. This so uh, he does shit like that, and it's fucking dope because like that splatter it turns into the turns into the city of New York. It's fucking dope the way he does it all. This guy's name is Paul Kenton, and he's just I want to buy some of his art, man. I saw some dude one time in. Uh, Wait, what? That would <laughs> excuse that me. That would paint, and then he would put like music on, right? He's from Sacramento. And then he turned it over, and it was the guy, that, the musician. Yeah, he's from Sacramento. That uh, fuck. I he's saw him in New York, though. He ball headed, and he's uh, Asian kid. Uh, man, he's uh, David Gibaldi. Uh, fuck, is that it? That's his name. That's his no, name. No, this because he couldn't. Be. How old is he? Dude, he's a young kid. No, this is this is prior to him. I remember seeing this dude in like ninety one. That 92. kid. That's 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 that kid's from Sacramento, and he's he he's the one that puts on music and makes art. All right, there's this there guy. was somebody before him. But that's still dope. But I'm saying there was a yeah. guy before him that would do that shit. He would be. That's just my hometown right there. Big time, 916. He, he would be in the city 
and mm-hmm. he would like be painting in the middle and then everybody's watching and he'd flip it over. And then it'd be something, yeah. Some of those, uh, like some homeless people are talented as shit. <laughs> Dude, I would go to uh, the Bay Area all the time, man, and then fools would be out there at the uh, by the pier, you know, with spray cans, making little, uh, like, uh, a galaxies and shit with like just like they get a bucket like, and, they put and then a, they put a, a plate on it yeah and shit. i've seen that dude <laughs> and then they burn it all and that was the i would be like oh man. i would sit and watch them do that all the time all day i i could watch someone paint and it's fucking dope man because I, I can't do that well any anytime you see anybody with talent yeah you know and a lot of times people don't realize did you ever see that video of i think he's like the world's greatest violinist Oh, yes. You and showed he's it playing me. in the subway, and everybody's walking by ignoring him, mm. not knowing they're hearing the best of what that is. And then there were some people that stopped that were pro- like, holy shit, is that him? Yeah, yeah. That's him. People were paying like two grand a seat to go see him, and then he's yeah, in, he's and he was the there, s- and they were just in awe. Like, what, what are you doing there? But it, it just goes to show you where, too, as a comic, mm. venue means everything. <laughs> no right? shit, right? If, if they're... Uh, if you, you, you go to a bar show you, and you don't know who the comic is, he could be one of the best. I love that, too, how people unvalidate an artist by, like, I don't know who you are. Yeah. Like, mother, well, I guess we don't exist. <laughs> I guess I don't exist. <laughs> fucking jerk-offs. Uh, I'm so sick of fucking some people coming to shows. That's why I yell at them sometimes. I'm like, just don't come. Stay home. Stay home. I don't care. <laughs> Speaking of uh, venues and shows, uh, there's some that are not going to be around anymore. All the JFL. Yeah, it got canceled, bro. Well, I I heard they're still looking for sponsorship, but that was like the biggest comedy festival in the world. I remember Aspen, Mm -hmm. which was dope. And then that got, that that went away. And then Montreal was like the one to go to forever. And I guess apparently they, they, they weren't making money. Yeah. And it, it just stopped. Well, it's kind of hard now to do comedy in Canada, right? Because you might get in trouble. I mean, know. you know, everybody talks about how all that fucking woke shit or whatever it is, all the censoring is is overrated. But there were two comedians. One of them got arrested for a joke, got sued for a joke. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, and then there was one where, like, I guess there was a, a lesbian couple making out. And then they were being loud, and he went after him, and I think they threw something at him, and then he he called them, you know, a slur, and he got hit with hate speech and had to pay him. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if that counts as a joke, but there, there was one guy who got in trouble. There was like a commission to see if he could still do comedy anymore. <laughs> yeah. Because they found his joke hateful. And there's something, too, about like they have like a podcast thing where it's like you, you're If you make restricted. a certain amount, I don't know if the bill passed or if it was being proposed, <clears throat> but if you're... I don't know. Again, just Google it. But if there was a certain amount of money or a certain amount of subscribers you had, you had to get your topics cleared by the government. That's crazy. Like we couldn't, we couldn't, you couldn't have just free form talk and thought on a, on a podcast. You got to have it already all shipped out. The, the basically your radio show, which is not what podcasts are. Well, you know, look back in the day, the FCC policed the radio, but the radio was free and it, well, it was corporate paid. So you had, uh, you've always had that. You've always had people saying you can't say this, you can't say that. But when it comes to ideas, yeah, I could, I get language. But that's I would think FCC and all that stuff because you have sponsorships, right? And you have like commercials but it was and advertising. But it was a federal. It was a federal government it's that controlled that, the airwaves. That would not control it, but would monitor what you're saying. That's crazy. You know, um, which I get that. But if it's a podcast, I mean, what the fuck? Yeah, because you have to go and it's find it forum. and click on it yeah. for you to take it. So you're making, you're, right. ta- you're, you're doing the whole wheel thing as opposed to being on the radio. I'm going to be here at five, at three o'clock every, every morning or every, you know, blah, 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 blah. So therefore I can get regulated because it is kind of a day job while well, this is just, yeah, you have to go out and seek well, it. Again, it was, that's basically, you know, when America was super conservative, mm. they, uh, you know, they were, they were trying to say, we don't want good people seeing this stuff. So they would, <laughs> Because you had to play, you had, they, they were always doing a dance with the FCC. I remember Howard Stern got fined yeah. a bunch of times. Uh, I think um, All in the Family did something where they they were told they couldn't do something. Um, and they, I just saw it, to, uh, they were talking about it the other day online. I was reading about it. Um, it was an old article where they did the intro again, mm-hmm. but they did it geared towards the FCC. <laughs> 
And, uh, and now, you know, again, the, the, and now it just went the other way. Now, now the, the woke are the people that are want, trying to say, you can't say things. Yeah. And George Carlin went the seven words. I think that FCC thing, well, they threw Lenny Bruce in fucking jail, bro. Yeah. Back in the fifties. That's, that's why, you know, again, when I, when I talk about, uh, the, the woke mob, so to speak, you to comics, you're the same thing as the other people. Mm -hmm. the, the, those two groups are the same fucking group. They Go just the die on different hills. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So Lenny Bruce got thrown in jail for cursing in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And then now you got, you know, people advocating for material. I mean, look, public television. Okay. You got a point. A comedy club. Yeah. Like the, the people that, that chose not to have uh, that, that Seattle club that had the four comics that they mm -hmm. canceled their shows. Cause they felt it was uh, not the environment for them or whatever. Yeah. Again, you have that choice, but don't act like that you're you're not censoring or you're not. Does that make sense? I just feel like that goes against all things that are of stand up and comedy. And you know, like I have a comedy club, but we're not going to give you all the types of comedy here. You got to. I just don't. Feel, I don't. I don't agree with that at well, all. Well, I remember too. I mean, like, where is the line drawn? Right. I think I'm, they should. I think everyone should boycott that place. I think that no comic well, should work there. It'll probably if if you know capitalism. I, well, I mean, it depends if it's if it has its base and that's how they make their money, and they don't want people going there. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But you know, you you've seen people, you've seen both sides do that. I mean, remember the baker that didn't want to make a cake for a gay wedding? Yeah, because it was his choice. Yeah. Now, it, using that same argument, it's mm -hmm. it's his. It's a private place. So yeah. wh where is that line drawn? And that's mm -hmm. I think where it becomes a gray area mm -hmm. and uh you know it's a dangerous it's a dangerous fucking place to be then i was like all right if you don't want it, yeah it's, then we use our the, how they do their thing they you know weaponize it and boycott and shut them down there be there's people that just say they want to vote a certain way and then everyone's like let's not go to this pizza place because they support so and so and, and this bill and again and they'll you, shut them down but they'll try <laughs> i mean it's one thing to not give them your business it's another thing to mob up Break windows, mm -hmm. oh, threaten yeah. people from going in. Mm -hmm. um, they start. They do that though. Those guys, I know they do. Those know guys do. do that. I know they do. Yeah, that's it, nuts. You know, if, if somebody has a stance on abortion, um, you know, you you see it all the time. It, it, to me though, I mean, the argument goes both ways though, right? So if I have a private business mm -hmm. and I don't want, and I have an opinion, because it failed with Chick Fil A. Oh yeah, they tried to like ban. Try to boycott fish Chick Fil A, and it just didn't happen. That chicken is too good. Go ahead. <laughs> I, had a, I have a Ron Vi is a uh, yeah. There's a couple gay comics that <laughs> yeah. had jokes about that. I can't. Dude. I can't boycott him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I seen him come out of it. I didn't really. I didn't even know what it, what, what they were having an issue. And I was and I, we were at a uh, in uh, in Flagstaff, Arizona, doing a festival. And he came out and he goes, "I'm sorry, don't tell nobody you see me here. I love hate chicken." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" He goes, "Like they hate the gays here." I'm like, "Do they?" And he goes, "Nah." See what. What it was was from what I what I remember at the time. Uh, the guy was against gay marriage, but he was a, he would be against you guys li us living together, mm -hmm. right? Uh, not us, but like you and your girl, or you know, living at a. He was like a traditionalist. Okay. Oh. So he just was for traditional marriage, which again, you just don't go there. Mm -hmm. You know, but it backfired because everybody was like, he has that right. Yeah. But you have a right not to go there. Mm -hmm. You know, just like a business has a right not to have uh, performers there. But if if you're starting with ideology and then it can trickle down to race, then it can tr trickle down to gender, then it could it could be anything. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, the cuz the that's the beautiful thing about a consumer market is you have every right to buy it or don't buy it. Just like but here's the thing. Tacoma Comedy Club picked up those dates and yeah. said, you guys come here. So, and I'm sure they'll sell out because people want to support that type of oppression. Yeah. If that makes well, sense. Yeah. Just, I'm just like, yo, if you, they're, they're canceling or they're canceling dates because they don't like their comedy, then, you know, and everyone's like the other, t the other side of that is like, oh yeah, no, but we like this comedy. And then after a while, but what's them to say, like after a while, like then they, they bar down on that kind of comedy as well before you know then it. Then they'll you, go out of business. Then you're, yeah. Then it's like, oh, now we're just spoken word. Um, but that's fine. But don't don't. I mean, again, you you have every right to do that, just like they have every right. And but what's funny is they're pretty liberal guys. They're not 
they just talk on shit on everything. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that, and they're jokes, mm -hmm. but again, it, it becomes that gray area and it, you know, double down. If they want to double down on it, double down on it. Uh, yeah. I hope, I hope your business lasts, but don't act like you really give a fuck about, you know, opposing views and free speech and, all that stuff. Would you go? Would you go if they called you and they fucking go do it? Um, I don't. I don't think so. Me neither. No. I mean, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be good there. Um, you know, I'm. I'm an honest guy. Yeah. Well, it's like. Well, I know my stand up. Like, it, like I'm not. I'm not blue. I don't really go. Like, I don't even. That like. That you know, like I'm none of that shit. So it's like it's just me experiences, and I. I don't just. Uh, but I wouldn't go there. I'm like I'm good. I probably could work that room and get it get over and do well. But nah, I'm good, man. Yeah, I, I don't, don't, if they asked me, I wouldn't do it. I mean, I wouldn't even have fun there. It would be weird. <laughs> you know, I don't want to, I don't want to perform somewhere where you're, you know, they're checking boxes and shit. I mean, but again, it's his club or their club or her club or whatever, them, they could, they could fucking do what they want. Yeah. And it, it, it's so funny though, how people view, and especially coming from the left, they view questions and different opinions as hate like you're automatically that you think they hate a group mm -hmm. which is such a, an emotional overreaction mm -hmm. when you know discussion is great i mean if 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 you have science and statistics and historical facts and whatever it may be you could you could convince any intellectual mm -hmm. not even convince you shouldn't you we could any intellectual group removes emotion removes biases right which it's it's hard to do. You just got you got to have the conversation, but people don't want to have the conversation. I, just, I like I watch a lot of these videos. Well, you videos have three too. types of people, really quick. Uh, well, you have intelligence, you have knowledge, and you have intellectualism. Now, intelligence is a gift. Okay, that's pattern recognition. If you ever take an IQ test, it's predicting what comes next with the information given to you. Mm -hmm. And usually, a high IQ is uh, associated with predicting and, and pattern recognition. Fucking code breaking. Well, <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, which that would be the equivalent to street smarts. Then you yeah. have knowledge. Now, knowledge is acquired. Yeah. So there are a bunch of people that aren't necessarily intelligent, but are knowledgeable mm -hmm. in certain things. And they use intelligence. Like, I'm not saying that mechanics aren't, but I'm giving you an example where if, if somebody learned about a car and how to fix a car, then they use the intelligence to say, hey, if you don't fix this now, this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But knowledge is acquired. But then you have intellectualism. And intellectualism is a practice. That's how you have to practice uh, removing biases, um, allowing information to come in, not, not predicting or arguing a side that you want to be true. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's also not withholding information, right? Yeah. It's, it's just getting all the information and then saying, okay, let's find the truth out of this. It's and guys that are think tanks. And that's a practice. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody has biases, There's, cultural biases, uh, geographical biases, religious biases, uh, you know. And then there's just facts. Yeah. And people could take facts and do what the fuck and make them go work for or against people if if they're trying to. There's a really good clip of, of, of how you speak about this, too, about like uh, removing the biases and whatever, whatnot, where there's a guy, uh, he's teaching a class it's via um, Internet. And it's a, he's a professor or whatever, but he's like, uh, they go, yeah, um, about J.K. Rowling and her bigotry. He goes, how, how do you feel about that? He's asking the professor, and the professor's like, well, what'd she say? And he goes, well, they say that she's a bigot, you know, da da da. He goes, well, let's 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 do that. Let's it was transphobic. For she was accused of being. Uh, uh, yeah, and then, um, but he says bigot on the thing. Do you have the clip right there, by any chance? Because I would like, we could listen to the sound clip and, and it, it'll play well on the uh, on the subject and on the, on the podcast right now because of just how the guy breaks it down and just turns the kid, you know, like, he's like, let's just, uh, is this it? Yeah, it's oh, that guy. It. Did you see this? No. Oh, yeah. you got Pause it. I don't want to mess my hair. Yeah. My hair. <laughs> when, when he slaps Travolta in the back of the head in Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> I, I got a rate. I knew you'd crap all over it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good Travolta. <laughs> all right, let's do it. What happened next was a very swift and forensic lesson in critical thinking. Critical thinking, yes. Let's define bigoted opinions. What opinions are bigoted? 
live your best life. Do you find that transphobic? I'm just going with what a lot of other people have said. At the beginning of this conversation, you said, given the fact that J.K. Rowling is transphobic, how do you feel about Harry Potter? I feel like an idiot now. <laughs> Well, off the video was shared. Well, that, oh, that they, didn't really show. They didn't, they didn't really, that didn't really show it. That that was very abridged. That's out of context. Too. Yeah. Uh, can you find a, a, a yeah an, an unabridged one or something? Maybe on a. Do you have like a Twitter account up on the, on this thing? Because that's where it's like you could find it hella easily. Well, this is um, what I mean too. And you know, younger. What, what's crazy to me too, especially in the university systems, uh, they are kids are being told, people are being told what to think, not how to think. Yeah. And that's why comics are a threat. That's his whole thing. This whole like that whole thought process is what he's talking about. And well, it hits. Again, yeah. you you're you're automatically so it's hard to debate against something where it's the they're already establishing something that it's not like they're talking about Hitler that's like, you know, so it's you a don't fact. Want to talk about it. It's just what did she tweet? I I forgot. He, I just remember this that she, she, there was backlash. Let's see if this is the right one. It looks like the same video. Oh, I just don't know. Scott. She's, she's had a pretty controversial past. I just want to know, like, what are your thoughts on it? And, like, do you still like her work despite her uh, bigoted opinions? So let's get specific, though. Let's define bigoted opinions. What opinions are bigoted? We're going to treat this as a thought experiment. I'm not going to say yeah. what's right or wrong or what way to think. The whole point is to learn how to think, not what Boom. to think. Oh, yeah. he's so a smart you say guy, bigoted, guy. You're, you're starting with the conclusion that given her bigoted opinions. Yeah. So first, her, uh, let's start with does she have bigoted opinions? So when you, when you say bigoted opinions. She has had a history of being extremely transphobic, I've heard. And you've heard. So what? can you give me an example? Uh... If you look at her Twitter, I think um, you can see a few things. Um, if you want, I could try and find yeah, see something. If you can find, see if you can find one. So, one of these tweets that she came up with in 2019, she said, Dress however you please, call yourself whatever you like, sleep with any consenting adult who will have you um, live your best life in peace and security, but force women out of their jobs for starting that for stating that sex is real. So you find that bigoted? What do you find about it was in there? It was deemed transphobic. I, like, I myself... Do you find that transphobic yourself? Uh, I don't really have an opinion on it, but I'm just going with what a lot Can of you other pause people it? have said. So let's of... pause it. Let's not go oh, with he's... what other people... So he doesn't have an opinion on it, but he's expecting him to have an opinion on it. Yeah. Okay. Can you play that again? I mean, just start it from where you left. Saying, let's try and learn how to critically think. So let's analyze the tweet ourselves. So that statement, do you see anything problematic? Disregarding other people's opinions. Um, she did try and pin some things on a, spe a specific group of, per of people. I where does she where does she do that do that? Can you read that? But force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real. So when I hear that I'm interpreting that as meaning if a woman says that, you know, saying that there's a difference between men and female and then being attacked as transphobic, I think that's what she's saying by it attacking someone for stating that sex is real. That is exactly what she's saying. Is that I, transphobic to you? So to me, no. Stating that sex is real is not transphobic. All right, so it's just pause a it. fact of life. It exists. Yeah. So what's confusing to me too is that their argument is sex is different from gender. Mm -hmm. So basically she's saying exactly what they're saying that there's there's but their argument is it's there's a difference between gender and sex. So she said sex. Yeah. But the thing is, is he's doing he's doing the opposite of what we were just talking about. Like there's think tanks and then there's group think because he's saying. He, no, 100 yeah, percent. Yeah. And he's saying hey, I like that's that's uh, uh, the subject matter is just it's whatever. But like what what's happening there is he's like he's like, so what how do you feel? And what you call because that's what they say. That's well, so he kind of like almost like, made himself part of that group. You know what? Yeah. yeah. And here's also what's dangerous is that there's become there's things that have become. People think are facts because they hear it so much. Like, for instance, yeah. um, you ever hear there's no separation in church and state in the Constitution? 
There's never been. Yeah, it doesn't say that, right? No, Somewhere, it doesn't. No. Um, just like money is the root of all root of all evil. That's not in the Bible. No, well, but this is different because mm-hmm. they'll argue separation of church and state, but it's not in the Constitution. Same thing. I'm talking about. You're, you're right. There, there. It's it's something that's kept being said, so people think it's real. But there's 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 nefarious things behind that, right? Yes. So if they're saying, well, because one's a legal document, the other is just an expression. Mm. So they're they're taking a legal document, like God isn't in the Constitution. Mm. Neither ne- you ever hear blacks are three fifths of a human being. Uh, that was never in the Constitution. Mm-mm. So there are things that people say. That's the three fourths. Three fourths of you. That's the three fourths compromise. Mm. Separate church and state comes from a letter from Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. Um. It, and it's actually not protecting. Uh, it's pro- not protecting uh, the government from religion. It's, it's protecting religion from the government. Mm. Right. So you get right. all of this misinformation that's used. So basically what it's saying, if you read the First Amendment, you can read it if you want to pull it up. (laughs) It's saying that anybody has the right to practice whatever religion they want and cannot be persecuted from it. Okay. Now, a lot of this stuff comes later on in arguments with like in law, right? So where separates church and state also becomes is that because when you go to like, say, Islamic countries, the law book is the Quran. Where are we going? What do you mean? Like, where, where are we going? Like, you're, you're talking t- about misinformation. Taking a long ride. Okay. No, no, I'm not. It's- yeah, because I'm like, yeah. So we went from the 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 think tank and group think to now we're all in. Well, in, this is where it starts, yeah. right? So people are misinformed with information that mm-hmm. they hear a lot and think it's real. They they don't bother to research it, and then they use they, that as fact. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Now, getting back to think tanks and and intellectualism. And by the way, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, what does it say? Am I right or wrong? Provides that Congress make no law respecting an establishment, respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting its free exercise. It protects freedom of speech, the press, assembly, right to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Yeah, it's five. Right. It's so, five things in one. So, but it's also one. saying that the government can't force you. No. Right. Because like, but it, it doesn't mean that you can't be influenced. Anyways, the point mm-hmm. is. Where science is great and where intellectualism, because if you meet a scientist, right, and he comes up with a theory and then he has a hypothesis, what's great about science is they are constantly trying to disprove it in order to prove it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's the that's the angle an intellectual will take, right? Where, They're okay, this wrong. is what I think is right. I have to be indifferent on the outcome mm-hmm. and I have to test it to see why it could be wrong. And then if it is wrong, then that's somehow proving it's right. But there's still a good scientist is indifferent on the result. I'm sure inside they're like, please let me be right. Yeah, I win that Nobel need, Prize. Yeah, I want to write this paper, this dissertation. So, no, what I, what I was giving up is groupthink. When, when you said groupthink versus think. Uh, yeah, because that's what he was trying to do to the cat. Uh, and he was like, yo, well, we're going to stop. We're not even going to. So this is what you're saying. And he's like, no, this is what they say. And it's like, well, then why did you, the way you phrased the question was that you were part of that group as well. But now that you're critically thinking for yourself, now you're starting to realize. And you could see, like in the video, in the clip, he his head pops out of his ass. Well, getting back to my constitution analogy, mm. it was for when he, the guy automatically assumed that it was controversial. He had never read it. He no. just heard it, accepted it as fact, yeah, never group. really looked it up. Now he's at a loss for words. Mm-hmm. And that is that is part of the... The mob mentality. Yeah, the mob process, mentality. Think. Yeah. And that's why that's what I was like. And like I said, the subject matter doesn't... doesn't ca- no, doesn't it matter, doesn't matter. It's not it's about just, the subject matter. It's, it's about, about how they present thinking. it and how they keep doing yeah. it. And that's, that's, what, that's why I think that the club, now getting back to the club, is... is Telling comedians they can't be there because they're, 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 they're becoming the perfect, like they're not being, they're, they're using the group think and fucking canceling comics without even fucking well, hearing they're, or being But they have that right. If yeah. it's a private, if it's a private club, I support their right to cancel me. Yeah. And or, they have every right to do that. Yeah. Now. Is it right? The repercussions no. come in. They have the right, cap- but it's not right. <laughs> there you go. There, yeah. Just in our, in our, in our, in our opinion. Yeah. No, no, no. Now. I would think that most intellectuals would side in the danger of that. Mm-hmm. Now, if they're taking government money like they do at the universities and they ban people from speaking, yeah, that's fucked up. Mm-hmm. That's 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 morally wrong. It's unethical. Mm-hmm. Okay, because now you're using state money 
to fucking to, push. To push whatever you want. Yeah. All voices. And again, the, colleges are supposed to be an exchange of ideas, even if you don't agree with them. Yeah. Now, if it's a private university, then you could do what you want. Mm -hmm. If it, And then if the people that supply and give money to that university are offended, then they have the right to pull their 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 students out. Yeah. And then now they're doing what this club's doing because they're like, well, okay, we're not going to hire you. Mm. Then they, they can get a board and start firing people. And then they could fire people that, that don't now, now it's a fucking problem. I say we start firing people right now. I well, say we, we fire them while we got the muscle. <laughs> but you know, it, it's crazy because it, it, it is man. Like you're, you're, I'm trying to think of the term where, that what there's there's a a, a a term in logic i think that there's a term that describes not group think um where it's a fact that isn't true that everybody believes is a fact there's a word for that oh that's pretty much everything your hard-ass mom be saying <laughs> no that's all <laughs> true she's like hey, you hard-ass mom all speaks shit. real true all the realness um i'll just say uh no um but yeah, no, no, no. And then, uh, especially like the the woke crowd. Speaking of woke crowd and stuff like that, uh, did you watch the Oscars? No, fuck no. You didn't really get Oscars or anything like that. <laughs> did you? Like, I didn't, man. This is the first year I didn't watch it. I didn't because I didn't see enough. I don't feel like seeing enough movies this year. Well, what films were nominated? The so the the nominated films were, and the Academy Award goes to the only I seen probably two. By the way, th this was the dumbest explanation of logic that I've. <laughs> I was trying to fucking search for words. Uh, fucking idiot. The um, I just know for best picture Oppenheimer won, but uh, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Best actor was uh, so in Oppenheimer it was Chilean Murphy, uh, Paul Giamatti for the holdovers, Maestro Bradley Cooper, Bradley Cooper, I'm sorry, and then um, Coleman Domingo for Rustin. I didn't see that. Did and, you, I didn't see any of them. And just uh, Jeffrey Wright for American Fiction. All I seen was Oppenheimer, and that's it. That's the only one I've seen. So my brother saw it, and he said that. That Joe Coy's bit uh, was funnier, was made it funny now. Oh, because he watched Oppenheimer? Yeah, he's like, I think it needs more backstory. <laughs> it's all talking, I guess. Dude, it is. It, it, but I thought that's, didn't Joe Coy host the Academy Awards? No, he did the Golden Globes. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then the, um, because I, I want to see the holdovers. It's it, That looks good, uh, but I just haven't got around to it. I wanted to see American Fiction, did get around to it. It just, all these things, all these movies weren't, it, they were very Oscar Beatty, you know? It's like, I don't. It's too much. It's too slow. Everything is really too slow. Like past lives. Um, Maestro. Maestro just came out, and I was like, ah, you know. I guess Bradley Cooper's very, you know. I was. What's it about? It's about the the guy that does the conducting. The uh, one of the A maestro. The maestro. Yeah. The uh, and he's like one of the best ever to do it. I don't know his name, but uh, and I guess it's what his name was. I guess maybe he might be named after uh, Maestro. Might be the name of him, and that's why they call it the Maestro. Um, well, they call that the. Uh, Oh, that might have been his that, nickname. That might, yeah. Well, that means the master, right? I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no idea. I, uh, but um, it's on Netflix. It went straight to Netflix, I think. And then uh, the only other one I seen was Killer Flower Moon, which I liked, and I thought Killers of Flower Moon was a better film than uh than Oppenheimer, because Oppenheimer it was a fucking talking movie, like a talking head movie, and there was some action here and there, but it was a lot of. Uh, a lot of like math and then it was very like it's just a lot of chris nolan won too finally for best director uh i seen and it's just a lot of his music you know he fucks with time like you know you'll, christopher nolan yeah. yeah he loves doing that dude it's like he'll take an hour uh to do pretty much five minutes in real time but you're just going in and out of other people's lives while this all this stuff is happening simultaneously I think he's fucking, but he's a fucking great director yeah i like his movies but like that's what he does like uh, the inception's great 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 uh example of that where there's fucking 17 things going on at one time in a in the in the in the same time frame so, but you're watching it you know who's good at that too is tarantino where he'd like shoot stuff out of sequence mm -hmm. and then make it come make it make sense yeah it's uh non-linear over there uh on uh like the I reservoir uh, dogs <laughs> it's not linear <laughs> the Your honor I, 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 there's a difference between intellectualism <laughs> and intelligence. Uh, I, I said, yeah. <laughs> Christopher Nolan does it really good too in a uh, uh, Memento. You ever see Memento? Yeah, of course. That's Fuck great. When, yeah. when he's writing shit on his arm. Yeah, and he explains it too. He's like, all of the scenes. I think it's like all of the scenes in black and white 
are moving forward and all the ones that are in color are moving backward. And then he just fucking throws them all over the place. So it was like, oh, interesting. There's a code on the DVD where you can watch it in, in linear, like boom, 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 like the way it's supposed really? to be. Yeah. And it's crazy. See, to me, that shit's brilliant. Yeah. It's fucking cool, man. I love, I love Easter eggs and like, you know, stuff behind. Yeah. You know, like, well, getting back to the Sopranos, that intro is so, is so cool because it's showing you the grittiness where he's where where he works what he does and then he ends at the beautiful wow, home wow, wow. Yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. and it's almost like you're going through the journey of woke up this morning but you know you know what i mean like you're seeing the factories you're seeing them going over the the in newark you're going into newark mm -hmm. coming back like you're seeing all the fucking then he pulls into this beautiful home wow, wow. and symbolically yeah. i think it's great man i think that's really smart you're um, uh, the Easter egg. That's why I missed the DVD. Uh, one of the reasons why I missed the DVD, which I'm actually actively buying all my old collection back because I DVDs were awesome because they had Easter eggs all over them. Like you had to go to a menu and you had to press down and right and left. And then all of a sudden it opened up another thing. And now you could see the now you can hear the commentary of Quentin Tarantino over, you know, dust till dawn. It's like hidden. And they don't you can't do that in streaming. And that's I'm such a good point. Yeah. And uh, that's so what was awesome. That was so great about it. And the, the cover art, too. And then the other thing is, like we were talking about before, they can't change it anymore. Like, that's it. It's a hard copy. Like, now you, if they, if they feel and deem something. They can go take it they off. They can take it off. You can never see it again. And Or they can cut it or edit it. Now you watch Goodfellas edited only now. That's fucking ridiculous. And then, yeah, like you said, too, they, they'll take the whole streaming service off. You can't find Dogma on anywhere. Kevin, Kevin Smith's Dogma. Why? Because Disney bought up. Uh, I want to say it was Lionsgate or Merrimax. I think it's both of them. So Disney bought them up and Disney was like, there's certain films that we don't want that aren't, aren't Disney brand, you know, our brand. So they fucking, the Dalman was one of them. So Do you they, have it? Do you own it? I owned it, but I don't have it anymore. Damn you it. could, if you like that movie right now, probably if you find it on DVD, it's probably worth like $400, $500. And there's a lot of movies like that now that that I are, saw that in theaters. George Carlin's in it. Yeah, I, it was great. Everyone's in it. Chris Rock, Selma Hayek, um, Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, uh, George it's Carlin. Getting back to that, like getting back to Carlin. Um, you know what he 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 talked about what we just talked about earlier. Yeah, the seven words of fucking. But you know that's the thing with Carlin. You never knew what position he was going to take. Shit got cut. That's Wonder why I, I think him and like even Bill Burr is so prolific. Mm -hmm. You never know. What's what he's what position or side he takes because he doesn't have one. Every point of view is not predictable. No, does that make sense? And it's great because it's so left field too. It's like yes, <laughs> he's to me. He's I mean the Arnold Schwarzenegger joke. I got to see him work on it um, one time in, in SF. He would go to SF and and do a show on a Monday night. That's and like you would get to see him and just kind of work and craft some shit out. And you know, at one point he was talking about his dad, and this was like a long time. And he, was like, he started to ball up a little bit. And he was like, "Dude, I never fucking, I never knew my dad. It's fucking crazy." And, but he was doing the, the, he was working on the Arnold Schwarzenegger bit, and I go, "I can't wait to see this finished." But it's such a good bit about how, how are you gonna tell this guy who's been fucking kicking ass for years, and he can't fuck his own mate? <laughs> <laughs> this guy came to this country. He said, I'm going to lift these fucking uh, weights and be famous. They go, you can't do that. Fuck you. <laughs> Buddy, I consider Burr a friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, in my opinion, I think he's the great one of the greatest to ever do it. It's hard to say. The, I hate the term goat. Uh, mm -hmm. You just got to say your top five, no particular order. But like I said, everything out of his mouth is fucking brilliant. Like when you see him on the co on the couch with Conan. Yeah. And Conan doesn't even know where he's going to go. And it's always some <laughs> left turn where you're like, well, what the fuck? I didn't even see that. Yeah. Like his WNBA joke is fucking great. <laughs> and again, man, um, you know, th these are the type of things where a, a, that club in Seattle might find him not uh acceptable to their community that they're trying and you know what i'm saying it's funny so who misses out are the fucking people yeah it's funny because everyone wants to be on the right side of history which is great but sometimes they overdo it to the point like hey now you're you're doing a little too much but a now. lot of times you're going to be on the wrong side yeah if you keep doing shit like that i mean just like all the people in the 50s that that threw lenny bruce in jail mm -hmm. they're, they they thought they're on the right side and they're on the wrong side and i i think when you're looking at majority of people I think that they don't agree with most of what the left, well, what the woke does. Yeah. Are, are they considered left now? I mean, like I said, I'm an old school liberal. Yeah. I don't know where the fuck I'm at. <laughs> you know?
So check this out the, the, uh, for a, little, a little bit lighter. Um, this is this is what I bought so far. I found out you can go on um, on eBay and go to Goodwill and DVD shop and just find like instead of having to go dig in the crates, which I love digging in the crates. Can I ask you something? What's that? Is movies a because I think there's a psychological attachment with you and movies. Uh, like I have that with McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I think a lot of people do. But when when we were growing up. It was such a safe place for kids, even though the food was bad for you. <laughs> but like my grandmother would take me every Friday. Yeah. And I go, like I'll go to McDonald's sometimes to feel better about myself. I, I don't know. It's like a comfort for me. Really? Okay. Uh, were movies like an escape? Because I know you had a fucked up childhood. <laughs> yeah. Was it an escape for yeah. childhood? I mean, do you feel like the smell of the popcorn or going to the theater takes you and makes you feel safe or something because you're really it's, yeah i love movie theaters because yeah um one it was the babysitter uh you know it's like if everything's going yeah, bad you go all, that was our bad. <laughs> <laughs> you just Dude, real quick story yeah. when my mom and father were fighting uh-huh they took us to see superman the first one yeah yeah and they dropped us off in the theater and i'm not kidding you we saw superman fucking four times in a row <laughs> yeah. the, the original one with Christopher Reeve. With Christopher Reeve, they yeah. were home fighting and shit, and there was, you know, there was stuff going on that yeah. we weren't supposed to be around. So they just <laughs> dropped us. There was four of us: my two cousins and my my older brother and me, uh -huh. and we were there for fucking. <laughs> Six hours at the movie theater. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny. You, I'm going to say a little story real quick uh, about another comic because we were talking about how the movies and he went to the drive and he goes, he goes, because I go, I went and seen movies with my parents and I went and seen movies that were I wasn't supposed to be watching at that age. So they didn't fuck. I, I went and seen Full Metal Jacket because back in the day there wasn't VHS as a me that was like later on, you know. Uh, so sometimes movies were still they'd still run. You know, what do you mean? Like VCRs and VHSs, they like rental stores didn't pop until probably mid '80s, late '80s. Like it wasn't something that was in the the late '70s or early '80s. Like 80s. no, early '80s. And it's like it was packed. Well, early it, '80s was huge. What a movie! Uh, can you can you do that for me real quick? I'd like yeah. to see that because like, I'm thinking I, cause I know because 1981 we used to go to we used to go to the video store was always packed. Oh shit! It wasn't until Blockbuster became a chain really, mm -hmm. but you had all local video stores, and I mean it was you couldn't. Because movies and would run. It was run. a dollar, ninety nine cents to rent. Yeah, because movies would run and then they they'd come back in the theater. Because uh, I remember seeing. Uh, Full Metal Jacket. I remember seeing the Goonies in the theater, and I remember seeing um, Color of Money in the theater. But well, you must have been young. How old were you? I, I remember, uh, fuck, dude, I was probably like four or five. Like I went and see to their on well, their dates. Goonies came out eighty three. Color of Money came out like eighty eight, I think. Yeah, and we'd go see. I'd see their movies. Like I went and seen Romancing the Stone. Uh, or I'm Romancing the Stone. <laughs> yeah, I seen all these adult movies. Jarrell, you got you got info? Yep. By summer nineteen eighty two, it was a, a solid phenomenon. But they started it around eighty eighty one. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, because like, but see, like, we didn't. They would show them, and I go, I go to the movies with them, and um, but it was funny because so Jason Wrestler is another comedian, and we we're talking about this, and he goes, he goes, yeah, I used to go with my mom and my dad all the time. He goes, I would see their movies too. He goes, like, uh, he goes, I went seeing fucking Purple Rain, and he, <laughs> and he goes, we're in the drive-ins, and he goes, there's this, there's this couple yelling at each other, going to work, and he's like, you fucking bitch, da da da. He goes, and my stepfather looks over to the side, and says, hey. I got fucking kids over here, man. You mind? <laughs> you fucking mind? And he goes, the guy replied back to him and said, the fuck you got kids at Purple Rain for? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was so funny. So I had a friend, uh, I, you know, I, he, we were the same age, but he was like developed. He had a beard and shit in <laughs> middle school. Yeah. And I, I was staying at his house and uh, his mom, you know, he was no, no parents really. Mm -hmm. Just like all of us of that era. Yeah, yeah. But he he was inviting these two girls over, and he had he had had sex before, right? Now, <laughs> prior to that, he he was inviting these girls over, and he's like, "Yo, so I was dressed up." This is when Purple Rain came out. Well, I think that had to have been eighty four, because I was like twelve or thirteen, uh -huh. and like an Apollonia. And he's like, "Yo, I'm having these girls come over," and I remember he had this thing called crossbows and catapults. What the fuck is All that? Right, um, it's coming full. When did that come out? Eighty four, right? Yeah, the summer. That's it. Was the summer, so it's this game. Look up crossbows and catapults. I'll show you. It looks dope as fuck. <laughs> and he had it, but he was talking about the girls coming over. I was nervous because you know I had my my dick looked like a mushroom head. <laughs> I had no hair on my balls. I was praying these girls didn't come over because I wouldn't have known what to do. Yeah. And all I wanted to do was play with his crossbows and catapults. <laughs> 
<laughs> All that. <laughs> look at that shit, dog. That that shit was dope. Oh man, look. I at never that. understood how it worked, but it had like. Uh, can you pull up the game board? That reminds me of like the game Mousetrap. It just got all kinds of shit. No, you just put, show a picture of it. The it has images. like giants that threw stuff and you would break castles. And I oh, remember, you, you ever I, hear uh, Chappelle's bit where like the Sunny D bit? Yeah, yeah. Where the black dude's looking at the purple drink? Yeah. He's like, right? <laughs> and, and he's like, I don't want some of that. <laughs> yeah. I was staring at, at the fucking game Catapults. like it was the purple drink. <laughs> there it is. Pick, pick that one with the castles. Uh, and the, and no, the down, discs. down. One more down. One. Down, down. Yeah, one. There, there you go. Look at that shit. That shit looks dope. That shit is. <laughs> and he had like he had it set up, and then there were giants that would that would throw them. I mean, the game was shit. Yeah, there was a dragon that it, it would throw everything, <laughs> and it was all set up. And I was, and I had cologne on a fucking button down, like I knew. But you're like, oh, that the Trojan horse. I remember, like, if you hit it, <laughs> if you hit his feet, the doors would open. <laughs> And and he, and he was talking about these girls coming over, and he was drinking and shit. You're like, dog. I, just I want, and I, I'm like, nah, I don't. I didn't want to drink. <laughs> and then I just wanted to play crossbows. He said, no, thank you. I just want to play with Castle Grey School. <laughs> Dude, that's the other thing. <laughs> what? I had a cat. My so my mom bought me Castle Grey School. <laughs> that was a shit. And I loved my He Man. I loved action figures, man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to hide them when my. Uh, when girl like my stepsister's friends would come over, uh -huh. but I got caught. <laughs> I, got I got caught playing, uh, playing with my He Man shit in the closet. <laughs> my cousin Alex, are you? Because we lived in the attic. Yeah. Me and my brothers stayed in the attic. There was three of us, uh -huh. and, I, and we had this like closet. Yeah, yeah. And I was in there with them, and I had Battle Cat everything, and 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 my my stepsister with her. When her friends were like, what are you doing? And I was like, ah, uh, hey, uh, I'd rather be playing with my dick than playing with toys type of shit. Like, no. fuck. Dude, you remember when to go see, um, went and seen the Wolverine movie. Remember? And, uh, yeah, my, I saw that with you. Yeah, my cousin Alex went with us. He's a doctor. He's a psychologist. Was that the one where he, Logan we saw? Yeah, Logan. Yeah, yeah. And so he, him, he got caught. But he was probably, I think, he was about 14, maybe 15 years old. But uh, yeah, they all went camping and they couldn't find him. They got all scared. They're like, where the fuck is Junior at? Where's Alex at? We can't find him. Looking all over. And they found him like fucking like, like, like 600 yards down the way by the river. And they saw his feet. They thought he was dead and, and fell in the river, you know, and halfway out. No, he had little action figures and he was like, <laughs> <in the river. laughs> oh, so that was like, so I go, that means that you took them from home and had them on you and were like, I'm fucking gonna, I'm gonna have a dope ass scene when I get, because when you get action figures to you, like, I used to have, have this joke about like, you leave me alone with like three or four action figures, I'll be good for an hour and a half because I know who's dying first. I know how they're dying. It's all in slow motion. Did you do any of that? Did you have like set up um, shit? Yeah, I would, uh, you know, I, I don't know, man. I, I used to, obviously, I mean, it's, it's hard to remember how I played with them. <laughs> um, but I would had I had like, spy, like um, so here's the other thing people don't know. Mm. In the 70s, okay, you could buy Spider-Man, Captain America, mm. all Marvel. But then they had Batman, Superman. So all the dolls were f sold by the same company. Yeah. Okay. And I used to love the old, if, uh, see if you can pull those up, 70s superhero dolls mm -hmm. and every time we went to the to the action figures to the, uh yeah action figures <laughs> <the> dolls. <laughs> like in hardcore so action like, figures i i had uh <laughs> i had a bunch of these man look at that shit see what i mean yeah i remember those they were kind of generic i remember the hulk being mad small I remember getting like a McDonald's toy or or ones that where the arms didn't move, so you had to like turn them onto their side to fucking punch each other or something. I love you, Jorel. There, you got to get the that. See that one with the whole group photo? Yeah, hit that one. Boom. So oh, like, they're plush, and the on the in, on the the body was plush. No, it was they they were all plastic, but they just had the costumes. Captain America had a shield. Anyways. Oh, that's right. They had that like, and you could rip it away. Yeah. So I only thing I remember is I had Superman fight He Man. <laughs> oh shit the battle of the century <laughs> what, did, you, did you make any money on these hey, tickets here's the other crazy part that's how old i was when i stole the car oh yeah that's how old you were you were playing with fucking yeah i was still secretly like, playing like the, the fight just wrapped up and then i went and stole the car because well, you have two you have two identities as a kid right because that's what i talked about my first special right yeah. you have one foot in being a teenager and the other foot 
and being a kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like, you know, there were a lot of girls around the way that, that liked me, so I was like making out, but then there was a girl that wanted to blow me and I was scared. <laughs> and then I would come I would come home, do yeah. some dirty shit, but then I'm like pew, 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 you know <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I wanna fuck, but uh, Looney Tunes is coming yeah. on in like I used to love G. I. Joe yeah. after That's the other thing, man. So you had me my little brother we we talked about this. We gotta I gotta find this this film we did. But you had after school cartoons, and then uh, you had Saturday morning cartoons. Yeah. So after school cartoons was like GI Joe didn't come on Saturday morning. It was when you came home from school. Yeah. And I love fucking GI Joe, bro. <laughs> I love GI Joe, and I used to watch <clears throat> He Man, Master of the Universe, Thundercats was dope. Mm. But then my friends, because you know you're also at that age where you have a friend that's like 14. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like my, my one friend, I'm not going to throw his name out there, but uh, he used to, you know, smoke weed and shit and do drugs and bang girls. Yeah. And Why I, would you say his name? It sounds awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this guy sounds amazing. But, and then, but I always wanted to, I always had, like my little brother always had a football with him. Mm -hmm. I loved going to ba play basketball. Let's play football. Yeah. yeah. Then we used to do some crazy shit too, where we would make a, a, a chalk square on the playground. Mm-hmm. And then we would tie uh, towels around our hands, and we would fucking fight. And we would have like tournaments. And it was it was on, like you punch in the face, everything. Yeah, yeah. So you had those grown ass fourteen year olds fighting like twelve year olds whose balls hadn't dropped yet. But um, and all you want to do is just go back home and watch GI Joe. But like you're around filth, and then you go home and you're a little kid again around your mom. Yeah, it's funny because you talk about like the after school uh, cartoons. I remember when I when I was growing up, our uh, there was there was two separate channels that had 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 uh, one was Disney Afternoon, and that was like Gummy Bears and you know uh, Ducktales, Tailspin, Darkwing Duck, and then on the other one was Warner Brother had like a whole whole set lineup where it was Tiny Toons, Animaniacs, Animaniacs. That's a fuck up. dude. Pinky in the Brain. Yeah, that's such an underrated uh, cartoon. People don't fuck with Animaniacs like that. This Tonight we're gonna take over the world, Pinky. <laughs> I used to watch. That. Yeah, I was right? a, I was a security guard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And at that time, and oh. I used to watch that in in the booth to pass time. Dude, it's so funny. It's so good. There's all the little tiny uh, uh, <laughs> cartoons in it. A chicken boo. <laughs> you are disguised, look like human guys, but you're not a man. You're a chicken. And it'd be this chicken, and he's like, he's like, I tell you, it's a fucking giant chicken. I tell you. And it was it was such a good fucking cartoon. Everything was good on that. So the here's a funny story. So I worked a. Uh, uh, I was in a security booth at like a private residency. Mm -hmm. So I was the guy that like signed you in. I'm like 24 at the time, 25. Cause I, I was doing comedy at the time. Yeah. Yeah. And pinky in the brain was on and shit like that. And I used to watch it, but then I would, I would be there from like, I would work from like uh, eight at night sometimes. So like whatever the shift was to the morning mm -hmm. and I was like mad tired. So I would jerk off to stay away. Right? <laughs> what the so, fuck? I would go in the bathroom, rub one out. You know, yeah, yeah, and then, but I would cut the cameras off, mm -hmm. and then and then go rub one out because you know, yeah, and then put them back on. But I forgot to put them on, and then uh, they got a call like the security cameras were, were off. Uh -huh. So then I'm like, you know, and, and by that time I had already, I had already, Busted I wasn't robbing times. anything. <laughs> oh, you were robbing. Okay, no, you were but, being good. So I remember the guy going, "What? You need to keep the cameras on. It's for your safety." I'm like, "No, it's not." <laughs> I go, "You know what? That's for if somebody comes in and kills me." You gotta know. You'll catch them. Yeah. But that's the shit they're gonna run on fucking TV. <laughs> yeah. It's, 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 it's the last image somebody, of me. <laughs> that's this is it on the video cameras. But yeah, uh, I used to rub one out uh, in the security booth. But anyways, pinky in the brain. I would watch that. Depending, <laughs> no, I would time it. <laughs> <laughs> and where the animaniacs? I used to watch. But I was like 24, 25 watching that shit. Yeah, that shit was great. There was uh, Pinky in the Brain. There was tons of cartoons within that cartoon that were good. Even like the little tiny things where it was like time for another good idea, bad idea, and it'd be like that skeleton dude. Now there, there was early morning cartoons. Yeah, those were that was a whole thing before too. school. Yeah, yeah. And I used to watch Bullwinkle. Yeah, those are the boring ones. I remember oh, that. Oh, Bullwinkle was great. I remember that. Yeah. They would be like, yeah. They, you say, hey, Bullwinkle. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. He was on, but then, then they had, um, then they would have like the Great Space Coaster. Um, they had, uh, uh, what was the other? Bionic 6 used to come on. Shit, uh, no, I didn't. Those were See, they, those time. were big. When, when I was in the, in the 80s, everything was like 
America mm -hmm. uh, heroes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you would get all these like Saturday morning cartoons of different. They were always trying to sell action. You didn't realize it at the time. Yeah. Well, the thing for like by the time I was getting out of that, uh, the Power Rangers started coming on in the morning, and it started like this 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 Asian invasion of like Beetleborgs and all this like you know, and I was like oh, I'm good, and then I would just I would just go to school early after a while. But but see that was always around. Which one? Uh, the, oh yeah, because those got they were old Japanese or Chinese uh, TV. Well, they shows. used to have a, sh a kid show called Specter Man. Look that up. And it was they were all come they would come from Asia mm -hmm. and they were always battling giants and shit and monsters. Hey, that's in that book that I'm that I read the uh, the Ready Player One. They talk about Spectre Man. Do they really? Yeah, and they talk about. There was another one too. Something giants. Is Spectre Man there? I wonder what year that came out. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, I remember that. And uh, what I thought was cool about Ready Player One is mm -hmm. that. Uh, is that the old guy in the movie, the one that created the world? Yeah, is exactly my age and my childhood. So when when he comes and remember he decorated the the be, the bedroom and he's playing the Atari twenty six hundred. Yeah, that's that's what that's what we played and that's when we were kids. It's so good. The book is really good, man. It's like it goes in more detail and more bring up more pop culture. They're making so, part two. Yeah, I'm reading part two right now. My buddy Dan, who remember, I have a friend that is the executive producer of it. Oh, okay, yeah. And he just posted um, that they just signed with Spielberg to do part two. Really? Okay, yeah, because I'm I'm uh, I'm four chapters into part two right now. See, I do miss that, man. I I do feel bad for the for the you kids, you guys. I don't know if your child. Well, I mean, I don't know if your child childhood's magical for any kids, but it's just everything is so exposed now that like like you know you you we had to be home to watch it. You could just do it on your own, but it was like exciting when everybody, yo, mm -hmm. I got to, I remember the A-team would come on. We'd fucking run home. Yeah, yeah. Watch the A-team. You know what I mean? Because that's it. You can't catch it again. <laughs> then the next day, everybody's talking about it. And if you missed it, you're like, fuck, I asked out. Yeah, you got to wait till the summer. See, I think Where I'm the in? last generation of that, though. Being almost 30, like nowadays, it's like, it's exactly how So when you were, when you were a little kid, they, were, oh, they didn't I, have the internet and shit? Not really, no. Not, not like it no, is no, now. No, yeah, dollar when I was, when I was like, little, you know. So you had, there was a scheduled time you had to be home. Yep. Remember getting the TV guide and being all fucking excited? Come home and uh, when the mark lights it out. On. Yeah, like I, that's, I got a whole bit about like fucking coming home and then, and but in the bit it goes, if you missed it, sorry. I was like, you got him. You might catch that shit in the summer on a rerun, but you'll never <laughs> fucking catch it. You miss that episode of Cheers. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. But it's fucking gone. <laughs> there's been a couple episodes of Cheers that I've gotten to catch now that I haven't, that I didn't get to catch when I was a kid, and um, because Netflix put it on. They put well, here's stuff. something when you mm -hmm. talk about the DVDs. Yeah. You could buy the season as a DVD. Yeah, yeah. But what happens in syndication, they won't show certain seasons because that's when the actors made more money. Uh -huh. And then that it's cheaper to show the earlier seasons more because they didn't make that much money then. Yeah. But if like with Friends, when they were making a million an episode, mm -hmm. they can't run that season without paying through the nose. Yeah. So you uh, have to buy My first DVD. action figure is uh, the $6 million man. The, um, did you ever see that one? Yeah, I see the, the, with the hand. We, I think we did this. We talked about this one before. With the eye? Yeah. And you could look through it. Yeah, you roll his skin up. You had a bionic. You could take it out. Oh, but like it, you were also saying too about the movie theater. Like that's another thing too I like about the movie theater. Like I can I get to shut off the world. Like you don't get texts. You can't call. It's 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 one of those last places where you can shut off the world and just sit and get and get, and be entertained. Because that's another thing too. We're constantly entertaining. So when I don't have to entertain, I'm fucking. That's why. I, but I, 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 and then I never, and I never let you finish that. I never let you finish the answer because I, I rolled over it. Um, but is there a psychological attachment to it? I meant that's more childhood. Um, no, I don't know if it's like something like a comfort thing or anything like that. It's just like I've always liked movies. Like I've always liked. Um, like the ET and the Spielberg, and it's just I don't know, man. And then especially going to seeing at a theater where it's like. Everyone there's happy. They're having a good time. Like yeah. no one's no one's upset. You know, everyone everyone wants to be there. So it's like this is and then when you see it collectively with a whole bunch of people and you guys kinda all experience the same thing, I think that's like like when the pandemic hit and like I seen those videos of uh like I I I literally started tearing up when they were all happy when when uh when 
when uh, Captain America got the uh, the Thor's uh, uh, dude, and everyone's fucking yeah. I'm like, oh, dude, in my theater they went nuts, dog. dude. It's such a it's a, it's a it's a collective experience, and that's why I like stand up so much. It's because you're trying to get everybody on the same wavelength, you know, for a little bit and just be in a. Big well, no, collective. it's what's great about that. Just to add to it, it is it's a shared the audience. It's a shared experience. Yeah. And when you see a good comedian or they leave, you've shared that experience with somebody. That's what you get in a movie theater. Mm -hmm. And that's what I loved about it. And then, and yeah, it's just, it's one of those things, man, where I just love going to the movie theater too. Just the whole, the whole ritual of it all. Like you said, the smell in the popcorn. It's like, yeah, that's, that's cool. But like the carpet, I miss the carpets in movie theaters. It's not the same anymore. You know, it's like had that whole like terrible design and shit like that it's kind of and then you when your foot when your feet hit it it doesn't make any noise because everything is soundproof but now it's all hard and cheaply made and shit like that you know what's uh like i said mcdonald's gives me that feeling and mcdonald's used to be like really magical around christmas they used to sell the gift cards or the cups the mugs and the, the cookies and you get cool oh. ass toys but you know what's really i i have this uh attachment to because you know i was i was a scared little kid because you know there was we lived in a rough area. It was just my mom, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you, you're, I don't know. It's, I it was, it was a sad, you know, you're sad, you're scared. Yeah. The, this, the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. The Cowboys. the Cowboys somehow, when I was a little kid, mm -hmm. I watched them. I didn't even really, uh, I mean, I, I started following them because of my, my, my father had money on. I told you that story. Yeah. Tell, tell the people. I don't think I became they're... a Cowboys fan. Yeah. Is, uh, basically my dad used to root for him a lot because they were always on TV in the 70s. And then my parents went to separate ways, whatever. And I figured, okay, if he likes the Cowboys, I like the Cowboys. And then I would try and study them. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I'd call him up, be like, hey, we just drafted Jim Jeffcoat. He's like, that's great. Put your mother on. <laughs> so I remember calling him because I th thought it was our thing. I remember mm -hmm. calling him when we lost to the Niners on the catch, crying. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, why, why, why are you crying? I'm like, because the Cowboys lost, you know, or, and he's like, I don't give a fuck about Dallas. <laughs> but he, because he had money on the game. Yeah. So he was always rooting for, for the, the Cowboys because he had money on them. <laughs> and here you are. But, Even, who was his team, though? Uh, he, Giants, if oh, anything. Oh, okay. Um, but with the Cowboys, so I, I just, they became something for me. And I would remember watching them on Monday Night Football. And not and not being old enough to realize they had shoulder pads on, I used to be worried that my shoulders would never grow that big. <laughs> and then uh, working out with my mom's uh, record cases and furniture, uh, and then bringing my little brother in, and 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 that became me and my brother's thing, and just being excited to watch it. My mom pretended to be involved mm -hmm. and learn, and it just became the 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 happiness of my childhood and the sadness because we suck and I haven't won a Super Bowl <laughs> in 30 years. Um, it, it just, that's my comfort. Yeah, yeah. And every time I see him, it just makes me think of Roger Staubach and Tony Dorsett, mm. Danny White, and it just brings me to a, a, a safer, happy place. Yeah, yeah. I know that sounds weird. No, no, no. It's 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 actually very telling. It's like, yeah, no wonder why. That's why you watch it alone. That's why you watch the games alone too, as well. And, and I, I love it. Yeah, and I or with, with my brother. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That's thing because you and your brother have a, a Dallas. Uh, that's Cowboys our bond, podcast. man. And then and then Thanksgiving they were always on. It reminds me of the, of the holidays. Uh -huh. Monday night football when when it's fall, and Monday night football's on. And you, oh. and then my mom taking us to little league, and then me playing in high school. It just became a part of an identity that I don't even really, I mean, I still love the Cowboys and watch them, mm -hmm. but football in itself was my life from <laughs> like eight till 22. Mm -hmm. And now it's not even a fact. I don't even talk about playing anymore. Yeah. Cause comedy took over at 25. That's the thing though, too, for me, like stand up. I, I found stand up real early and it's like, like I said, if you if you seen that 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 thing um, where I'm I'm eight years old at a school, I put the picture on Instagram, and one of the questions was asked me, "What do you want to be when you grow up?" And it said, "Comedian." And it says, "I'm eight years." Because on my birthday, they would sit us by the wall, and the whole class would just ask you questions, and she'd write it, and it'd be a time capsule for you, kind of. And it says, "Comedian." And I, because I found stand up around six six years old. My my dad's cousin was babysitting us, and he was like, he did a he did a reference uh, a Kennison reference. 
And he's like, you don't, you don't know what I'm talking about? And I'm like, no, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and this guy, this guy should have been babysitting us too, man. He's fucking nuts. Um, and uh, uh, he goes, go in the, go in the closet and go grab the tape. And it's, there's a big tape, and it has, it starts, there's a nest. You know what a nest looks like? I go, yeah. He said, and then it's kind of sad. And he goes, it says Sam and Dykes. Go get it. So I got it, and I watched Sam Kennison's uh, hour, and then I watched Dykes's hour afterwards because he started doing the nursery rhyme that one too. So I was like, dude, and it just blew my brain. I'm like, they're all. Every, they're doing this just talking. They're just getting this whole audience to just enjoy. That's fucking awesome. I want to do that. And so I found that really early. That was your first. That was my first, man. It was Kennison. It was Kennison. Kennison was my first. Mine was uh, Delirious, Eddie Murphy. Oh, yeah? I when saw I that, that and I was like, that, that Eddie Murphy was that. I can still watch that. If I, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not a fan of stand-up. I know it sounds crazy. Uh-huh. I don't watch it. I, I, I love performing it. I love our, our culture or, or whatever it's called, our community. But I can't. I can watch Delirious if I if I have to get amped up for some. Yeah. By the way, I had the same thing. But I put, what do I want to be when I grow up? Uh-huh. And th- it'll bring the podcast full circle. <laughs> One Dallas Cowboys, two a superhero, <laughs> and three was a comedian. Yeah, yeah. It's it's great, man. But I always viewed getting getting in trouble as comedy. Did you? Yeah. Well, no. I like whenever I got in trouble in class, the audience was the, the audience. The class would be laughing. I felt great. Mm-hmm. Then I get yanked out. <laughs> you put in detention. Yeah. And I'm like, this is what I want to do. I want to get in deten- be in detention <laughs> for the rest of my life. You know what's funny is, uh, I mean, or do what gets me into debt. De- I don't want to be in. in your, detention. Yours was getting in trouble. Mine's was impressions. I used to do impressions. And you that's are. What, I'll be honest with that. you, dog. Yeah. <laughs> you and Petey are really good. Yeah. It was. Because you, when you, the only problem is you do impressions. Of people nobody knows. knows yeah so you better hope one of us become famous butch bradley <laughs> me somebody yeah i did i did one of uh uh, uh back in the days to do um uh, uh fucking burt burt kreischer and no one knew who i was because like i like i don't do his do laugh burt. i don't know but burt because he would tell a story because like when i first seen me see me eat shit one time right the very first time i met him and he goes that's fucking great dude that's fucking that's awesome because he, like, <laughs> <laughs> he was just who, like who else can you do Oh man! Do Butch? I know you did Butch Bradley. Butch, but, but Butch is more of a. Uh, it's just his body when he's fucking talking like this and shit. You know, yeah. he, when he gets into Bruh, telling you a fucking he turns story, his head. he's like, "There's fucking seven people." Listen, listen, but I don't fucking do this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and he does. It sounds like he's always got spit in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, but it's like it's it's a. Um, but I would do impressions and get like when well, my first impression was uh, Popeye. And uh, I did the laugh. And then after that, dude, I, uh, another full circle moment. Um, one of my, uh, I would, I, I knew all the lines of Karate Kid. So I do an impression of, of Ralph Macchio uh, do it in Karate Kid. So that's kind of like, I, then I was like, oh, like I can even just do How's it. How's that off. go? I don't even remember anymore because I don't remember the lines of the movie anymore. But I would do that with my mom because my mom would be the mom. And then I would do that. And I would you when the black eye scene when he's like, come, come, come here, let me see who did that to you. I was like, nothing, mom, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and so it'd be super dramatic and stuff like that. Because my mom would laugh. She'd be like, you do it so, like, you get really into it. And I was like, yeah, because it's fun. Because I get to talk. I'd be, be goofy. And it's like, and then so that's how it would make people laugh. And then um, doing accents. I started doing accents and getting into that. You do a really good um, Irish accent, though, man. I like yours. Because you do that when you're talking about the, you had a joke where you're talking about doing a shot with someone. Maybe in heaven, how far we've heard it, I don't know what shit. I could tell you, I got in trouble. I did a book report, uh-huh. and I used to love going up and doing book reports, <laughs> right? I even, I'd wing it. <clears throat> so I did one. This is an impression I got in trouble for. I did it in front of the class, okay? Put the camera on me. You ready? <laughs> I swear in everything. I think I was in fourth grade. Mm-hmm. I go, I did an impression of a dog sitting down, and I went like this. <laughs> and my teacher went get over here and i was like yeah a little <laughs> like, the class the half the class didn't know what i was doing but i did i went <laughs> a little pizzling. You know those little red rocket coming yeah, out? A little lipstick. Yeah. <laughs> that was my first impression as a kid. Oh, fuck. I got in trouble. Yeah, it's uh, it's funny because like sometimes I'll do impressions that I don't even know I'm doing because I'm telling a story and I'm being them and I'm being me. And then before I end up, I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't know I could do. I, yours is a hard impression because uh, you, you don't have a New York accent, but people always give you a New York accent. Yeah, I don't. Yours is, it's just something. I mean, you know what, though? Because I... I do that. Hey, how you don't I fuck around with yeah. like that? Because I just think that guy's funny. Me uh-huh. and me and Luca used to do him all the time. Um, 
But no, I don't. But if you look up, like put in a South Florida accent, you'll see what comes up. I looked it up. <laughs> so, I mean, and, and it's the other thing, too, is that both my parents and my stepfather and my grandparents are all from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, was, I wasn't exposed to any other type of talking. That's how I learned how to talk. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I don't say talk. I say talk. talk. Yeah, your 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 rhythms and your cadence are that of East Coast, but there's no dialect no. in it. So it's like it's really interesting. And like, I use and I and I you know I grew up around a lot of brothers, so I'll use a lot of different terminology mm -hmm. that makes it sound a certain way. Plus, I'm nasally. <laughs> but if you look up a South Florida accent, I looked it up. It's it talks about no not not to perform it. Um, the, it's described. It says a northeastern mixed because like my nickname when i was back when i went back to new york I, they used to call me dog mm -hmm. that's my nickname in like brooklyn oh yeah because i'd be like yo what's up dog yeah all the time and they, and they didn't they didn't get it but that was a southern mm -hmm. a southern thing that i got playing football like yeah dog let's go who is who is it you guys always play on top 10 on top on on, on you on the list oh uh big ace big ace yeah. ah, ah. <laughs> you ever hear that song to the window to the wall they stole that from jam pony oh yeah so jam pony was uh like a dj group in fort lauderdale that they they used to do a thing called mic checking do you know what that is Jarrell? Yep. we haven't played jam pony in a while let, let, can i uh, this is fun we can end on this <laughs> okay yeah because he's young uh put in um yeah jam pony express so that what they would do is they would play songs and then they cut it off and they talk. They'd be like, Mike, check. Me time. <laughs> and they would do that all the time. And uh, Bring the ruckus. But that's, you could buy their tapes at the flea market. But if you put in, uh, put in, um, put in Jam Pony Express. And, and they'd rap over it and shit. But th this was huge in South Florida. But a lot of people took this style. Mm hmm in the south and then they took a lot of their terms uh put on the yeah just hit the first one you'll hear what i mean put it in by the way all these songs remind me of fighting yeah do you hear this? Everybody. Jam Pony Express. Hey. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Here comes Ace. This is the big Ace. The bodyguard. This is Ace. Huge. Big Super sound the bed. JPS Red. God damn me. At the freak name. This song don't ain't a good representation. Go go back to the to the playlist. This Saturday coming straight to you. Uh let me see the other ones. Big Ace. Uh what else is on there? There's there's a, my favorite mix is when he's like, check a one, check a two. Red and black. <laughs> Live on wax, yeah, buddy. Uh, Is that loose ends? Check, check. What's what's that one say? No, what's the one beneath it say? Big Clear, ace. yeah. Hit this one. <laughs> one, two. Turn it up. Hanging out, my nigga, big ass. You know what I'm saying? So what you waiting for? Big ass, what you waiting for, nigga? Huh? <laughs> Long time in the By the way, we ain't faking, we had the you could hear the gold teeth. <laughs> and we still ain't done. Right. He's coming. Face down. Nigga, you want song? You know I do. It's the party crew. Big A. Jammy, I oh, they miss you in the back. Yeah, that's called Clear. That's a song, Clear. This but reminds me of every. Roll, you can hear the the, the jam it, pump it, rump it, dump it. You know what I'm talking about? Papoose and DMX and what is dog is dog. We used to. This reminds me of all the house parties we went to and then fucking fights with. Uh, you know when there's like a fight? <laughs> that's East Coast, we. 
We fought to corrupt. Nah, this is down south, dog. This is Fort Lauderdale, dog. <laughs> Brown County, dog. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> This shit but is so it, crazy because he just yells over the. That's, that's called Mike, that's called mic checking. He just mix. That. I know, man. It's, I love it, bro. And and we would hear that shit and everybody played it. You know what's crazy too? The number, the two highest paid pass rushers in the NFL right now are from oh, yeah. Broward County, dog. <laughs> Bosa and the kid that just signed uh, Burns with the. Uh, from Minnesota? No, no, from Carolina. Carolina to what Texans? No, Giants. Oh, with the Giants. Up. Oh, okay. Ready, what what'd you call it? Daniel Hunter two, went to Texans from three, Minnesota. Four. <laughs> no. So they did a song. Uh, I, I don't know. It's uh, called "That Pussy's Mine." Uh, it's no. Everything's about fucking. <laughs> yeah. That's why I talk about it. everybody. Everything down in Florida. We've been fucking <laughs> like Instagram girls since the fucking. 80s dog it's like the rest of america just caught up to south to florida dude i when I that's to, how long we've been filthy when i went to miami i was like why the, everyone's fucking attractive even the bitch that's checking out the uh shit at walgreens dude it, it there's so many I'm gonna, I'm gonna it was ridiculous it just it blew my brain man i i shit i couldn't live in florida i'd have been dead by now oh bro growing up there was the, was the fucking best <laughs> Yeah, no, but I can hear that touch it, burn it, bring it, uh, it, it automatic. The, 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 uh, the chorus went, it was great. Uh, God, let me, let, me, let me find it. It went, uh, I don't want to ruin it for you. We, <laughs> he goes, uh, I'll just tell you, he goes, hold on, it won't take long. Let me put this rubber on. <laughs> well, at least he's promoting safe sex. That's actually very, very responsible, a big ace. But he, um, he doesn't want any little aces out there. <laughs> dude, every song was about sucking dick. <laughs> uh, strip club, con strip clubs. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. What's the song? Uh, put a, did, I, did we play Shine Me Up? I don't know. But that sounds good Poison as fuck. Clan? That sounds good as fuck, though. So, Rock that deal. Two Live Crew, <laughs> obviously, we know. Yeah, uh, Two Live Crew, I remember that. Yeah, listen, listen to the words of this. I think we did this already in a podcast. <laughs> Gotta hear the chorus. When you shine me up. You know what that means, right? Yeah. Spit on the dick. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for explaining. And make me come in four seconds flat. Shine me up. Shine me up. <laughs> I'll tell you what. These guys aren't performing in Seattle. No, hell no. <laughs> you know what's funny, though? Nobody holds rappers to the same fucking criteria they hold comics. They hold comics to a whole different standard. <laughs> There's another song, uh, Scrub the Ground by Splat Pack. Fucking hell. <laughs> By the way, man, see if you're if you're mixing shit. There's, I bet there's shit in here you you could sample. Splack Pack scrub the ground. <laughs> They're the ones that did shake that ass, <laughs> bitch, and let, let me see, see what, what you got. got. Listen, the beat in this is dope. Miami bass history. Just ass everywhere. This fucking wet t-shirt contest. Only if you want to. I believe he's drunk off Hennessy. <laughs> I remember those shirts, dog. Yeah. So anyways, we've been twerking since forever, man. Look. That's what I'm telling you. You young kids didn't invent anything. <laughs> Oh damn, here we go, here we go. <laughs> you know what's a good song, man? Alright, we got we gotta wrap it up. But <laughs> yeah. this one, man, this, this I used to love this song and, and you really only heard it in Florida. It was called um Tag Team, not Tag Team, um Pick It Up by Home Team. <laughs> Make sure it's up though when you hit play. Unless it's a delay. Because the beginning is dope. Dude, this is when like people were doing that. This is for Rasa. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
short, but you can't toss it. I'm high tech, high rack, side of back, faucet, laughing. When your whole staff can find it, lose it, physically abuse it. Back to the illness, I killed it. Got a wreck for it, score it, lose it. I used to love this song. Find it, blind it, back you know what? You know what makes you like a song more is if you're in the club when it's when it's playing. Uh-huh. Up. You can play it out. Yeah, there it is. All right, all right guys. guys. Yo, so it's been another episode of Chains Out. We've been all over the place as usual. Uh, I think to this day, never say who's he. You caught me, got me, part of me, excuse me, abuse me, you lose me. Why you, you can, on the high crime? When I'm on the right to direct. You can catch me at Rooster Teeth Feathers. Are you are you at Rooster Teeth Feathers this, this weekend? Uh, and also too, I'll be uh, I'll be in Modesto Hold next on. weekend. All right. Not yet. All right. Sorry. He had a good part. Okay. <laughs> and then um, I'm going to be going on a trip to uh, for the USO, but uh, I'll be having uh, podcast episodes, too, uh, that's coming out. I'm going to re- reboot my old one called uh, My Life in Rambles. So tune into that, too, while I'm gone. It's because I won't be here on this one. Yeah, you're, not, gone. you're gone for a couple weeks. Yeah, I've gone for like three, four weeks, yeah. So uh, it'll be me and whoever I pull in here. Yeah. Yes, one. Get a gun and bust one. A hide out, a ride out. I take your whole side out. I wreck this, check this, hold it, fold it. I rolled it, I done it. I'm getting mad blunted. I don't fight, but right. So I got a padlock. Coming out of bed rock. Big daddy death rock. Uh, so check it. Find it and lose it. Physically abuse it. Use it. Choose it. Break it. Make it. Take it. Fake it. Shake it. Asalaamu Alaikum. it. Uh. Um, yeah, I'm just at Kimmel's on Sunday, 7.30. If you're in Vegas, uh, heading next week, we're finishing up Cobra Kai, which is great. And, uh, yeah, that's it, man. You guys, keep tuning in. We're going to keep this playing. Last verse, and then we're out. I get a rough pin tough, just like an ocelot. I rock it, I'm toxic, calm in monoxide. Plus, I like cramming, microphone jamming. I wonder where these guys are now. Yo, I'm slamming, cutting through nothing like a ray beam. Never try to daydream. I'm on swallows like, like the A-team. Change like Menudo. Once been the Pluto. A Pluto, you nudo. You want to hit who ho You're stupid. you man can mm-hmm. step like a man can. Yo, I took my friend again. I'm bending against my plan against. I ran again. 12 o'clock, yo, I'm a seabed. Plus, I'm a deed rat. Fuck it, I'm a weed head. Pick it up. All right, guys, that's our time, man. We love you. God bless. <laughs>